<laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> yes, you're cute. You're spoiled though. Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you are new here, my name's Koa and this is Koa's Plant Corner. So today I'm gonna show you guys some recent plant purchases that I made. So this actually spans back to December, 2022. So that's last year, December. I did challenge myself this year and say that I wanted to venture out into more philodendrons. Yeah, they're not like expensive aeroids per se. They've gotten a lot more cheaper, which is nice that I'm now getting into them. Um, but if you don't know, or if you don't follow me on Instagram, that's fine. I have more success with anthuriums when it comes to philodendrons I struggle um so this year I did want to challenge myself to get more philodendrons and just take care of them I've been seeing a lot of people's philodendrons here on YouTube and like they're so beautiful I've tried some of them even like the ones from Ecogenera they have acclimated well they kind of rehab perfectly fine but after a while in my care they just they die they die let me not sugarcoat anything they start to die so I have a lot of philodendrons here and of course I have to add a few anthuriums because you know that's just what I do so yeah let's get into it if you have been here for like years it's like the beginning of my channel you know that my first ever bigger plant purchase was this plant I got it from Williams Nursery if you're familiar if you are in Jersey you probably know the nursery they're not open anymore like they're not you know there anymore but at the time I got it from Williams Nursery this is a philodendron billetier or we used to say back in the day billy tie before we knew was it was it billy tie billetier I think it's billy tie we used to say but it's a philodendron billetier it's actually a three it was a three leafer when I got it this leaf as well but now guys I'm so excited about this this is actually a new leaf like what? Koa, like, I did this, guys, okay? And I did have, I did ask some questions in my Instagram post before, like, how do you guys take care of your billies? Like, what do you do? I overwater a lot of plants, that's just what I do. But everyone was saying they leave it alone, they don't touch it, like, they treat it like a succulent, and that's what I've been doing. And it got me, it got me a new leaf. So, so far, I'm really happy about it. I don't know how much they'll expand. I don't really have much experience with, with field engines like this, so I don't know how you know how theoriums how the leaves start small and it gets bigger i think it won't get too much bigger than this if i'm basing it off of my pink princess or something and stuff like that i don't think it'll get too much bigger but it's still small but i'm okay with that at least it's a new healthy leaf it looks good which i'm happy and proud about so i got this plant from fontana plant house you already know the majority of my plants are from them um but yeah i got it in the same cup even with my name on it, Koa, and I have not taken it out of here. I'm normally the type of person that would change out soil mix mixes as soon as they get a plant. Um, I don't like, I like to use the mix that I'm com comfortable with, especially since because I am an overwaterer, so I have a very chunky airway mix. It looks a lot similar to my mix, so I said, you know, let me just leave it alone. Let me just not stress the plants out anymore. Let me just put it next to a place where I have bright light and leave it alone. And so far, it's been working because look at this new leaf. I'm so excited about that. I'm excited to grow this plant even more to look at big. I know the growth pattern is crazy. I could probably put it up a pole. People do that, right? I'm thinking I probably would do that so that I can keep the growth pattern a little bit more structured, but I, I would like them all to kind of face one direction. So the pole may have to be coming soon. But yeah, first up is my Philodendron Billetier. I did have like three billies before that. So my original one from Williams Nursery, it was very expensive. It was overpriced because during that time, billies were kind of like harder to find, I guess. Um, it was a little bigger than that one, two leaf plant, and I killed it. I don't know what happened. It was in my nose, but I just killed it. And then I had a baby one, like a stump cutting. Do you call philodendron butt cuts? I think you do. Like I had like a butt cut with like two growth point from Fontanimal, I killed it. Then I got a small one from them, really cute, I killed it. So this one, I'm really proud that I kept it alive so far and it's not in my fabric core greenhouse. Like I had the other ones in. So maybe it just likes to be an ambient humidity best. So that's the first one. Okay, now I'm going into my bins. Does anyone else have these? like a bunch of these bins with plants in them in their plant room. I have four of them in my room and all of them are filled with plants. Uh, so today I'm gonna show you two of them. So this is my first bin here. 
again, full of philodendrons. This is a philodendron splendid. So I had said that I wanted to, again, venture out into more philodendrons. I wanted to get a glorious, but they had splendid as well. I know splendid is a melanocrysum crossed with a varicosum. I'm not a fan of varicosum, nor am I really a fan of melanocrysum, but I think I can get with this splendid. Super pretty. The back of it, the back seal is very nice and neon -y. It's kind of hard to tell with the light shining on it. Kind of hard to tell. But yeah, this is the leaf. This leaf grew in my care. Can y'all believe it? This leaf is also growing in my care as well with a new leaf on the way, I think it is. Or is that just a um, caterpillar? Whatever, I don't know. But there's some arrow roots on here, super fuzzy. It's in that bin, like I said, it's in a very perlite heavy mix. Again, from Fox Animal Plant House. I did not take these out of the pot, being very light on the watering. Cause you know, I think anthuriums can be overwatered a little bit, but philodendron, they can dry out a little bit. Correct me if I'm wrong. But based on my experience with these, they can dry out a little bit. They would prefer to be dried out a little bit rather than being overwatered. So I'm very light with the watering. Um, and so far it's been doing well. It's been doing great. It's really cute. It's splendid. In these plants, the reason also why I want to do this video is that I want to put them on poles. Um, so I want to show you guys what they look like right now without the pole. Kind of wanky, wanky, janky, kind of wonky. Um, yeah, so I can't wait to put these finally on poles and have them climb up the right way. Next one. Oh, see, I overwatered this one. See, cause this leaf, you see why I can't be trusted anyway. This one is a Florida beauty cutting, like a low variegation one. I have been wanting a Florida beauty for like years now. Um, I just know that it's something that I can't have in my plant space because, or my plant room, because there's no, literally I have no space for a wide growth pattern. For now, I have a project. I call it a project for uh, the winter this year. Um, this is the Florida beauty low variegation. Not a lot of variegation, but I think I'm okay with that because the Florida Beauty, if I were to get actual Florida Beauty, it would be a full plant, not like a cutting. This is a one leaf cutting. This is the pseudo leaf, like the small one that first came out. See how yellow that is? It's not variegation, guys. It was green yesterday. I watered it yesterday too. I think I overwatered it. Anywho, this is a leaf afterwards. No variegation on it as well, which is fine. I just want to test growing out the Florida type plants. Um, so this one was like a little cutting. It was good price, but okay, whatever, fine. I'll try it out. And this one is the newest leaf that's growing right now. So I think Florida beauties are like, has that variegation that kind of like, it takes a while for the, the variegation to burn in, I think. So I'm just, I don't know, leave it alone. I have it against the moss pole and guys, there are, there are roots. This year I also want to like do better in moss poles, but look, there's, there's roots. Y'all see that? Y'all see that. When I first got it, it was in a container of moss. So I actually wanted to try it out in pond because um, I've seen a lot of people have them in pond, philodendrons in pond in general. So not only am I challenging myself with philodendrons, I'm challenging, my, challenging myself using pond more. So this is in a pond and perlite mix, perlite at the bottom, um, that's the reservoir, Enos mix with some pumice and perlite on top there. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a moss pole. I got these moss poles from um, Plant Life Lex. I'll link her down below as well. So third plant is the Philodendron Florida Beauty. Look at me, Philodendron Florida Beauty. This one is a Philodendron Sotoroy. So I have an, I already have this plant. I have it um, next to my Pink Princess and my, what do you call it? Terrarium setup thing that I did. I'll put the video if you're interested somewhere on this video. I mean, on the screen right now. Yeah, but it's really cute. I like soda a lot and I do want to try to grow one up a pole. Right now it's growing up the side of the um, bin. But the leaves are kind of getting a little big. See how big that is? These are soda not soda So it's kind of cool. Leaves are getting bigger. Look at that new leaf there. Looks juicy. Mm -hmm. So this is another plant that I want to get a poll in my next repot video, which will be probably uh, probably next week for you guys or two weeks for you guys. But for me, it's going to be probably in the next few days. <laughs> I'm not going to include my Hoya Bellas. Um, if you watch my Hoya collection tour, I'll put the link of it here. Is that where it goes? I think it's here. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys the it's the Hoya Bella Alba Varigata. 
the Anna K. Bui one, blah, whatever. It's the hanging one, as well as the really full Lita Bois that I got from the same seller on Etsy. So yeah, those are also very new as well in my collection. And I think that's it for philodendrons and everything. Oh, I have seeds. This is an Ethereum long pappy cross with bullet, I think it is. I'll put the name of it on the screen. You said three, um, three seeds that I got from Kaylin Frosty, I think it is, on Instagram. I'll put his ad name on the screen as well. Um, he was selling some of these seeds from his plants a few weeks, months ago, I think. I think it was early January, I believe it was. Um, so yeah, they've sprouted so far. I just actually recently put them in my soilless mix because I want to try growing these in soilless mix. And I think I'll just take one out once they get rooted and I'll put one in pond and try it out in pond. If I have like multiple Ethereum seeds lately, I've been trying to put one at least in pond so that I can get more familiar with pond. When it comes to aeroids, I'm not that familiar. So I have these as well. I gotta put a label on this too so I don't forget. I have a girl and I'll show you that I keep like either new Ethereum seedlings or um, I'll just put some plants that are being chopped or any type of, ho it's like a hospital area that I use up there. Plants that are acclimating from um, greenhouse community to, come on. Okay. Plants that are acclimated from greenhouse community to ambient, I kind of put up there before I put it, um, let's just show you guys real quick. Before I put it anywhere else, I'll just show you the area. You guys can see this in the video coming up. That area there is where I have my other ambient humidity anthuriums, but um, before they go there, they were pretty much all here. So that's where this one is right now. It got burnt. I was thinking as well, it could have been an Azimax thing. I think I did treat this one with Azimax, then put it right back up there. I learned my lesson, guys. I learned my lesson. This happened in a lot of my ethereums, but these are the two leaves that came with. This one here. And this one here. This is our, I didn't see what it was. This is our red crystal cross with Lux. This is the new leaf that actually happened in my care. So pretty, look at the sinus. So nice. I don't know, Lux hybrids, I I like Lux hybrids more than I like Ethereum Luxurians itself. I have a Luxurians, I got it from Echo Genera. It's had therp since the first day I got it. I think I just fell out of love with it because of that. But the Lux hybrids, I'll show you another one that I have that's fairly new as well. Um, I can never get sick of those. All right, next one is um, a wishlist plant for me. It was a wishlist plant for me for the past two years. I first saw this plant on Charmaine's channel, again, on Plant Parenthood. She had this one, I think it was, it was way before she kind of acclimated all her, most of her anthuriums, I believe, to her shelf in her grow room, in her plant room. Um, Ever since I saw it, I took a screenshot of it and I'm like, yeah, I like this plant a lot. I got it um, imported from Cartel Dawn. They're on Instagram. I have bought from them many times before. Great experience, you know. Um, they're pretty They're pretty friendly and they're pretty good with everything. So I got this one as a clone from their mother plant, they call it. This is an Ethereum Dark Phoenix, guys. Like, what? I never showed you guys this, but I showed a lot on my Instagram because like, I'm literally obsessed to the point where like I'm concerned for my well-being. Like I'm really obsessed with it. This is the newest leaf that it put out in my care. It's so chubby on the side. It's so funny. Yeah. Now I'll actually show their mother plant on the screen as well so you can see what it looks like. This is their clone. I believe it was a cutting from their plant. This is actually also the first anthurium that I've had in pond. A pond mix. Hold on. This is again Enos. Ina's pond mix, Ina's mix from variegated plants shop. I'll put her link down below, um, but it's in there. I chose to put it in pond because they actually grow their anthuriums in pond, um, Cartel Dawn that is. So I just like, okay, let me just put it in a pond mix, it should be fine. When I tell you this thing acclimated like a dream, like no problems, this was the leaf it came with, this one. A little bit yellowing, I think it's yellowing because of me. I have, it's been in this bin here for, since I got it, which was like maybe October-ish. I got it October last year. So yeah, it has no fan. It's been in the bin. I leave it open some time. This is the first leaf that it came with. Second leaf that it came with, super cute. That leaf is cute. Wow. 
third leaf that it came with. A little bit of a fungal spot there, I believe. Not pest though, I've been keeping an eye out on this baby. I play no games here. No games. Yep. And then this leaf came out in my care. A little bit stunted, a little bit small. So I was like, okay, this is the first leaf after it being acclimated, which is fine. You know, it's kind of normal. Kind of expect some ugliness when it comes to that. It's the leaf that just put out, like, so pretty. Kind of cool. I'm gonna show you some of the roots too as well. Like when I say it's doing well in this mix, it's doing very well. So let me just show you uh, some roots there. Let me turn it this way. Look at that, just roots. Roots for days. I put no perlite in this, no pumice, nothing. I just put the mix itself um, just to try it out. <laughs> it's funny that I tried it out on this plant. There's a little bit of, I don't think it's rot though. I think it's algae in the bottom. Yeah, so I do plan on, yeah, it's some rot there. You can kind of see. I do plan on pulling it out of here and actually potting it up in the same Enos mix, but I want to add some perlite, some pumice to it. I'm just getting more familiar with adding some more amendments to pond mixes because the mix itself, you know, it kind of gets expensive you just using the mix alone. Um, but that's what you want to do, you know, do you. But I've been mixing a lot of my amendments. I've been adding amendments into the pond and it's been, I've been getting the same results, honestly. It's been great. Also, this is another uh, luxuriant hybrid. I did show this on one of my Instagram reels. What do they call it? Instagram shorts. Um, but this is also a Lux hybrid. I got it from Facebook Marketplace. I'm sorry. I got it from Facebook in a plant group. Um, in a plant group selling thing. This is a luxuriant hybrid. This is a Pappy. Nope. Sorry. This is a Mag Crystal cross with Luxurians hybrid. So this is what one of the leaves looked like. This is actually a leaf that was shipped to me in with. Very pretty. Another leaf that was shipped to me, I believe so. I think I said doing that right, right? I'm lying. I'm lying. This is the newest leaf. This is the newest leaf in my care, actually. So you can see, just similar to that red crystal lux like very bumpy but this is another leaf let me try to come a little closer so you can see very pretty it's like almost like an iridescence to it i'm like moving it around so you can see it in different lights very pretty don't focus on me this one actually has a pup as well there's this leaf and i do want to separate this too next time that i'm repotting i mean not next time because i just potted it in here this is one leaf another leaf right here and when it came to me or when it came shipped to me this leaf had just like emerged so this is the other leaf for that pup right here super cute I have this one potted in my soilless mix that i kind of tested out on my anthurium bilatus first before testing it out on other plants so i feel like plants are like rooting a lot faster in the coho coir i don't know but there is also cheap urban fiber in here too maybe that's why but look at that root just look at that and juicy nice root and so far that's the only root i'm really seeing as a new one so i'm happy that this one finally like you know i'm actually comfortable i'm actually comfortable with this one now i was very scared about having it because the person that i got it from he used a very like chunky mix like it was very was it chunky i think it was very chunky it was just something i wasn't used to um but i like to have a little soil tree fern cocoa or something in there to kind of you know mimic soil it just kind of makes me feel better and i know that i'm not underwatering plants by water you know what i mean but anyway talking a lot this is the mag crystal cross with luxurians i forgot to show you another plant so this is my second monstera in my collection. Um, this is my monstera Thai constellation. Okay. Again, you can guess who's this from. Just guess. Font Animal Plant House. Yes, it's from them. Um, this is what it looks like. This is the most recent leaf that came out in my care. This is the leaf that it came with. Oh, we can't see. Sorry. Really pretty. This baby leaf is so tiny. This leaf here. 
as well as this leaf here. So yeah, variegation is pretty cool. Um, why did I get this plant? I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of people, people have it. A lot of people were complaining about um, the fact that Thai constellations, they like rot pretty easily. So I don't know if an, if an overwater should have a Thai constellation, but here I am trying it out. I have it on a moss pole from Plant Life Lex. Again, I'll link her down below as well if you're interested in these moss poles. This is the transparent one. And I have it in my signature square pot. This is the jumbo one. So yeah, this one as well. I'm not a monstera person at all. Um, I like out of all the monstera, I can tolerate a deliciosa form. I like deliciosa. I like the way they look when they're really big and like the large form ones. Small form is cute as well. But um, yeah, I had a Monstera added something I can remember climbing up the wall. It was, it was pretty big. It was, you know, nice. But the thrips, they just like they're thrip magnets. Now that I know this, I also have a sport form. I mean, a sport variegated Monstera as well. Just thrip magnets. But now that I know that I'm using a lot of systemic in it and keeping a tight look, like, you know, keeping eyes on it. But anything that's funny, you know, we ain't playing no games here. But yeah, playing Thai Constellation. Monstera Die Constellation. Look at the light. Look at yourself. Say hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. 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 Say hi. My name's Kada. I'm so cute. Yes, I'm also three years old. Oh, look how cute you look. You're so cute. You look so cute, camera. Yes, I'm three years old. I'm no longer a baby. <laughs> yeah, she turned three uh, last month, which is exciting. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you want me to do more plant hauls. I do plan on this year doing, um, just not buying as much plants, just doing a lot more trades. So that'd be kind of fun, even maneuvering into that space because I haven't done much trades before in the past, but I think it'd be fun to do that this year and just kind of film my whole process of doing so. Thank you all so much for watching. Feel free to check me out on Instagram if you're not following me, at Coa's Plant Corner. So I do a lot of stories on there as well as I try to post like a few times a week. So the ones that you don't see here, you definitely see on my Instagram. If you missed it already, feel free to check out my Hoya collection video. I'll put it on the screen now and Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.